Dale Harris, what's going on? Mike Boars with the Mike Boars channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking furnaces today. In the event that your furnace starts and then turns off before the cycle ends or meets the preset temperature on your wall mounted thermostat, let me ask you a question. Is it windy outside? Because if it is, that could be the cause. We're outside and Budweiser's heading somewhere. Dale Harris, look how windy it is. And this is a perfect day where this will happen and in the event that again it is a windy day and your furnace is starting and then stopping well guess what chances are one of the common causes is you've got backflow of wind entering into the exhaust portion of your furnace and traveling downstream and inside and into the furnace causing all sorts of sporadic and interrupting behavior to your furnace and again it is a windy day as you can see and what we'll do now we'll head inside out and we are going to talk more about what aggressive and heavy winds entering into the exhaust portion of your furnace and traveling inside your furnace will do to the operation let's go inside it's cold we are now inside and DIYers here is our Bryant furnace as you can see and Bryant is under the carrier brand and to the right of the furnace itself yours may be on the left hand side but this is the main power switch we've got it in the off position as we film this and show you what's going on Check out that large pipe or duct. And it feeds all the way to this portion and up through the floor and out as we were just showing the top of the chimney area. And this part was capped off a few years back because that was the exhaust for the standing 55 gallon water heater. However, as you can see, We've gone away with that and we switched to a tankless water heater and the exhaust had to be rerouted as shown there. And so again, they capped that off. However, let's get back to the effects that a very, very windy day has on the operation of your furnace. And in the event that it is extremely windy, well, unfortunately that wind can make itself into the exhaust pipe and interfere with the operation of the furnace. What I'm going to do is carefully remove this shell or cover. And for us, all it is is this very long screw into this portion of the furnace. And I will pull that up and out. I'll set that aside. At this point, I've got the cover leaned up carefully and safely so it's not going to fall and damage itself. And here is a better view of the inside of our furnace. Check that out. We've got the inducer fan and the pressure switch, we've got the gas valve. And down below, we have six burners. And inside here, you'll notice way back there is the actual igniter. And there's the little tab sticking up and you will see that in action here shortly. And I'm going to reposition the camera and talk more about these little sensors right here. Some call them sensors, some call them limit switches or cutoff switches. There's another one right up there. Those are very important. At this point, I've got the camera repositioned. Again, we are going to talk about these little cutoff switches or sensors. Again, some people call them cutoff sensors, while others call them cutoff limit switches. Either way, whatever you call them, they have one purpose, and that is to detect any sporadic behavior or rollback in the flames coming out of the burners. And here shortly, I'm going to turn the system on and show you exactly what can happen with even the smallest amount of air being pushed inside this area right here while the furnace is up and running. However, again, back to these little sensors or switches and a 101 or basic definition or purpose of them is while the furnace is up and running, they monitor this entire area right here. Or in this case, this lower sensor monitors this whole area down here while the upper left-hand corner sensor or switch monitors the upper portion. And again, any sporadic behavior or any of the flames getting out of whack and not traveling in a perfect straight line out of these little burner tubes and into their respective holes. You can see on the far end of each of these is a circular cutout in the aluminum panel. And when the furnace is up and running and operating in the exact design manner it is supposed to, those flames go directly straight and into their respective holes. However, as we're talking about, all it takes is a windy day and a lot of wind entering inside that top exhaust portion of your chimney and traveling 
all the way through the ductwork and into this furnace and interrupting these flames. At that point, the flames themselves may roll back or act sporadically and not go directly into the respective holes. So in the event that flames start coming into this section of the furnace, guess what? That sensor is going to send an electrical signal to the control board and tell it to shut the system down. So again, a basic 101 understanding or definition of what that sensor or switch does. It sends a micro amperage reading to the control board in the event that it detects any sporadic heat in this area. And the flame itself, whether coming from here or here, doesn't actually have to make contact with the sensor. All the sensor has to do is detect a certain heat temperature in that area that's above what it's supposed to be. So again, a built-in safety feature that protects not only the furnace, but your home. In addition, another way to say sporadic behavior or rollback with the flames is burn flow interruption. And that's more in line what the professional technicians will use. Oh, DIYers, you'll never believe this. Our inducer fan just spun because we had air or wind come through the ductwork. This is our inducer fan. On the back side is the inducer motor. On the inner portion is a larger inducer fan. I was not expecting that. That's awesome that it did that. Unfortunately, you didn't get to see the speed it rotated. You just kind of caught the tail end. It kind of spun like that. But anyways, coming up here, there is where the exhaust enters into the system. So if a heavy wind comes in, and gets into that portion of the furnace, it's going to blow back and interfere with the burner flames by pushing air outward toward us out of those holes. So what I wanna do now is show you what it looks like when air is pushed into that system and interrupts the flames. And all I'm going to do is gently blow into it. Don't try this at home, I'm just demonstrating what this will look like in the event that you have a lot of air or wind being pushed into your exhaust while your furnace is running. What I will do next is I'm going to turn on the main switch just to the right that I showed you in the beginning of this video. And you hear the furnace turn on. And what it's doing now, it's going through basically a 60 to 90 second test and verifying it has proper ventilation. And there's not a lot of trapped hot air in the initial portion of the furnace that would not be safe. And what will happen next is the upper inducer will turn on. This fan will start spinning. I'll show you that here shortly. And then shortly after that, the igniter will heat up and ignite the burners. And there it is, the inducer motor has turned on, the inducer fan is spinning. Shortly after that, again, the internal igniter will heat up and begin glowing right in there. You will see that here shortly. And once it gets to a certain temperature, it will ignite the burners. As you can see there, the igniter begins to glow. And once those burners ignite, I'm going to blow inside that little area, not to a point where I'm going to get an aggressive rollback. All I'm going to do is gently blow in there. And there it is, all six burners are up and running. And take a good look at the flames themselves. They are traveling directly downstream and in a perfect straight manner through their respective holes, as I was just talking about. And as you just heard, the lower blower motor and fan down below kicked up a notch to blow all that hot air through the ductwork and out of the vents and into the home to heat the house. And again, all I'm going to do at this point is blow gently into that area, and I want to show you what it will do or what it looks like with even the smallest amount of air being blown into that area and interrupting the burn flow. See that? Again, don't try this at home. I just wanted to give you a better understanding or visual on what will happen in the event that you have a very windy day and the furnace is up and running and you've got backflow into the system from outside through your exhaust ductwork and that aggressive wind is interrupting the burn rate or flow of those flames and rolling them back into this section and those sensors are picking those up and sending the signal to the control board to shut the system down within minutes or seconds after it just started. All right, DIYers, we have left the furnace room and check this out. I am not kidding when I say we are always, always, always busy here at the DIY Raptor headquarters. And the jet ski is inside. This is my mom and dad's jet ski. And I know what you're thinking, but yes, I have been given the green light. Wife approved. She allowed me to bring this in for maintenance during the winter for DIY videos for all of you. I got one awesome wife and I am a lucky dude. 
And here's our Craftsman AK DIY Raptor workbench. In addition, we've got skateboards and much more. We just rebuilt an outdrive, and we'll post a few links down below in the comment section as well as description section. DIYers, hopefully this helps. Do us a favor, below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching, and check this out a mini board or fingerboard and that is our crypto token check out toolboxtoken.com we're having a lot of fun with that thanks again for watching